Hello, and welcome back to New Game Who Dis, the show where we try our collective hand at a new game and then fall desperately in love with said game and want to play it all the time forever. <laughs> Except the show only allows for a three episode arc. <laughs> or maybe that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys? How are you guys doing? Hi. Hi, everybody. Hello. It's the one weakness in the format. What's I that? Do love the, I love the idea of saying, game, I'm in love with you. Is that just me? Am I crazy? Is that <laughs> Am I crazy? Is it not? <laughs> It might just be. It might just be the environment. It might just be the the time of year. It's the fall, the time for falling in love. The movies tell us this. Mm. Matthew, is that true? Is it true? I mean, I don't know. I've seen When Harry Met Sally. Is that an autumnal movie? It's, they famously walk through the the Central Park in a beautiful autumnal moment, wearing great autumnal fashion. Yeah, but they're friends for like four years. Like, that, could have, like, that scene could have happened at any point during that friendship. You know what, Skid? <laughs> Let me have my autumn in New York. <laughs> All right, that's fine. I'm just, I never thought of it as a particularly romantic type of year. There's, I mean, there's other, I thought spring was the time for romance. It doesn't matter. Grant had something to say. All right, fine. Yes, <laughs> I, I grant you that spring might be time for romance. So maybe spring is the time for lust. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll grant you I that. Know. I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, Grant. What were you going to say? Oh, no. I was enjoying the two of you tearing each other to shreds too much <laughs> to interject. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I, I related very hard to you uh, kind of, uh, you know, making this game and yourself an item before the game agreed to because I've done that quite a bit in my own <laughs> relationships in life. <laughs> you, you, got, you got ahead of yourself. And you professed your love, professed your love, and they're like, we've been on like one date. Grant. Apparently, uh, it was just a really good movie, and there was no real connection. <laughs> oh, it happens, especially this time of year. Yeah, yeah. in the autumn, one <laughs> time for love. When all the summer blockbusters <laughs> come out in the autumn, in the autumn, the autumn. I always say it's the time for love and the time for rejection. And <laughs> that's right. That's just how it goes. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it's more accurately the season of rejection. What was Rent, tree, what was Rent talking about? Leaves. What's Rent? the song from Rent? Seasons of the... What's that? What season are they talking about? All of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's what's that musical about? Anyway. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> How do you measure a year? You measure dun, dun, in love, dun, dun, seasons of love. Dun, dun, yeah, but all of dun, them? Dun, dun, that seems dun. like, I don't yeah. know. <laughs> Actually, Rent, Rent does contain the line, I hate the fall, which I never really understood, except for the fact that somebody, you know, ma major lovable characters have died during the autumn. But I, I guess that's... Uh, I guess I would why, sour it for some would characters. sour your experience. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got to say, though, I think, I think this game loves us back. Go on. I've, oh, I was I was looking to you for sort of like the affirmation of like, yes, it does. And the pat on the back of like, the game loves you back, Sydney. You know, if you, um, if you were confident <laughs> in that love, Sydney, maybe you could have let us know why it loves you back instead of the delusion you're living. Oh, my it gosh. Love you. Grant, I don't pay you. I pay my therapist for this kind of stuff. Uh, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Whoa, Paul, my therapist. Hello, um, Sydney. I laid on your way with it too. <laughs> he sounds just like that. Um, no, I don't know. I, I, I really like. I was saying this before. I think in the first episode that because you guys are you came as big fans of Star Trek, and I know Star Trek. I've seen some episodes, but I was never like a Trekkie in that way. But I do really love this game. I have been having a blast playing it, and this is definitely a game I would take outside of new game who this and like play it with other people yeah it's i you've been doing great by the way sydney oh it's thanks been, grant yeah. um okay adequate skid <laughs> somewhere between the two i'm off no, my I'm game but sydney's great. been awesome sydney has been i think her character is the standout clearly of of the short session uh <laughs> yeah she's been she's been crushing it Yes, but it's all the I roles agree. too. I mean, character creation basically spells out almost your whole future for your character in a way. Like I just, I had really good roles. She became born into like a really strong center captain-esque kind of character. She has all these high skills and stuff, which is really cool. And I would never 
make a character like this. I don't go for the paladins. I don't go for like the tanks and stuff, but she's really this sort of like forefront kind of character. It's true. Oh, yeah, I should I, also say, obviously, uh, you might have noticed that Alicia is not here. She unfortunately couldn't be with us here tonight. Obviously, we're going to miss her. And uh, we really hope we get to see some of the adventures of um, Lucille Kershaw, former <laughs> law enforcement <laughs> yeah, officer. Law <laughs> enforcement officer of the stars. And current intergalactic bounty hunter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we miss one-eyed, Alicia. One-eyed bounty hunter. <laughs> one-eyed, one-eyed bounty hunter. <laughs> she also yeah. lost a leg, right? Like, yeah. Did she? <laughs> oh my god. She, she really she should have there. never gone to that carnival. That she was just a huge. <laughs> <laughs> she never should have gone to Tilt a World. We all told her that. <laughs> we said it's like, come on. <laughs> You're the god. best teen teen looking cop on the force. You don't have to risk your <laughs> extremities this way. Gosh. Yes. Um, well, I should also say, again, uh, against their better judgment, perhaps, Mongoose is once more generously supporting the stream tonight, uh, and they're giving away three physical copies and three digital copies of the core rulebook. This core rulebook. Ooh. Uh, and again, the- this is a global giveaway, uh, so no matter where you are in the world... You can enter the. You can enter win. So Brennan's going to drop a link in chat. Uh, just so fill that out, and then you too can enjoy this game that we love slightly more than it may love us. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, good. do you want to get into it? I mean, this is. Uh, we didn't, I didn't do the full Troy Lavalley stall until you can, can't possibly stall any more banter session. But we got a lot to cover tonight, so I feel like we should we should jump in. Let's get into it. That's fine. We don't, yeah. there's no need to, there's one Troy in the universe is enough. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's talk about what happened. So last week, a group of travelers met at the Flammarion Highport, and one of them, Titania Weslin, played by Sydney. Applause, applause, oh, applause. Oh, thank you. Was I supposed to do something? <laughs> thank no, no, we were supposed to applaud you. Uh, we didn't. Uh, she had recently retired from the Imperial Interstellar Scout Service, and they owed her a ship. And she met up with some friends and acquaintances. Captain Aaron Bridger, Imperial Navy retired, played by Skid. Applause, applause, applause. Uh, and Jude Wolverson slash Levi Blaze slash Butch Cairo, uh, who had once loved Titania from afar and then went on to flunk out of college, <laughs> but then become the universe's most famous journalist. <laughs> by far. These characters, of course, played by Grant. And Knighted. <laughs> and oh, and Knighted, yes. And Knighted, Sorry. yes. Sir Butch Cairo. Sir Butch. Etc., etc., etc. So anyway, they met up in Flamarian, and uh, when Titania went to meet with the Scout Service representative there, she discovered they didn't exactly have a ship ready for her, but they did know of a ship, a ship in their service, a scout courier called the High and Dry, that was stranded on the backwater world of Walston. And they told her if she was able to retrieve it, they'd be willing to give it to her. Plus some cash and, you know, expenses, etc. So Titania, of course, accepted and she and her friends embarked for Walston. But when they made Planetfall, they learned that the previous c- crew of the High and Dry were, well, let's just say disliked amongst the Walstonians. No one really liked having them around and everyone was glad to see them go, though we don't know where they are currently. Uh, they, so the, the crew here, uh, met with the Minister for Offworld Affairs, Public Relations, and Fisheries, Alan Greener, uh, who offered the travelers a deal. If they would complete a simple survey mission, one he had hired the previous crew to do, but they abandoned before completing, uh, he would reveal the location of the ship. They agreed. But it turned out, though, that the ship was parked in the caldera of a volcano. So together, they trekked up the mountain, and despite a few major minor falls, they were able to find the ship on an island in the middle of a small lake in the crater. But the high and dry was, um, you know, not in great condition. Turns out the previous crew had stripped it for anything valuable and made off with the ship's air raft. Uh, Though they did meet the ship's resident pet, who uh, the previous crew had uh, abandoned, uh, Kimberly, a a Tensher's wolf, uh, so they befriended Kimberly and went about repairing the ship and completing the new survey mission uh, and gathered some data on whether or not the volcano is active. But just as they were completing repairs and, you know, kind of sitting down with the ship's computer to analyze the data from the survey job, the travelers spotted three rough-looking men scaling the lip of the crater and making their way across the lake and directly for them. What do you all want to do? 
I uh, want to climb into the turret and just start blasting at them as they come, <laughs> as they approach our ship. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see if the turret is currently functional. Okay. Because they didn't make off with anything valuable. Uh, they just because of what whole... they did to that dog. Yeah. They this took is a like John turret. Wick. Well, roll, roll recon. Oh, I don't have recon. Do you want me to roll it? Yeah, all of you can roll it. Yeah, you're, I assume you're all on the bridge, kind of look, seeing this when this happens. You've all returned from the... Uh, you've returned from your from setting the, de- the, the, de- the charges and the lava tubes, and now you're all back here on the ship. This is intellect, correct? Uh, yes. I got a seven. Okay. Uh, to do seven as well. Captain Bridger. Uh. Uh, two. Okay. Uh, Titania and Butch. May I call you Butch? You may. Okay. Titania and Butch. Uh, you. You get from what you can see of these guys who are now kind of about who diving into the lake and swimming their way towards the island. Uh, they look to be dressed in the fashions of of Walston. They don't look like off Oh, They're Walstonians. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, That's um, weird. But they are uh, as they but as they approach the ship, you see that uh, one of them is carrying a pistol. Oh. Another is carrying a shotgun, and the other is carrying a uh, a tool of some sort, a spanner. Uh, what do you want to do? So you still want to go up to the turret, Skin? Uh, yeah, I am actually going to go. Up, I'm going to go up the turret. My plan is not to obliterate them, but I would like to fire a warning shot if I if I can. Okay, I'm going to. Let's see. I would ju- if this were say uh, Delta Green. I would have mm-hmm. you roll a luck roll to see if the turret was repaired in the repairs. There's still luck rolls in this too, aren't there? Are there? I thought I <laughs> I thought I remembered that. I, I don't can't. know. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> I think there are. <laughs> this is why the game isn't that into you, Matthew, because you don't know things <laughs> like this. <laughs> yeah. I forgot something I read. You know I hate roses. <laughs> Tell you what. Roll let's roll a, roll two roll two D skid and uh, I'll give you a fifty fifty shot the turret works. Okay. You, if you roll seven or above, the turret works. Uh, five. I. You get up to the turret, and unfortunately, you have not. Titania has not been able to get the turret in working order. Okay, wait. Does did Titania? Do I know if I have fixed like the intercom system of the ship? Could I like make announcement out? What well, it's space, but maybe we have this for when we like dock. You know, just to say like coming in, backing up. Roll, roll two D. Again, just a luck, seven, just a luck seven or yeah, seven or above. I, this, this is not. I don't know if this is part of the rules. I thought it was. I think it's it's, it's, it's something like the rule. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it sounds about right. We're rolling D, so um, that is a seven, a five, and a two. Okay. Yes, the intercom. The intercom does appear to work. With okay, the loudspeaker so, essentially. Oh, a tannoy. Oh, yes. is that what it would be? Is that what it's called <laughs> uh, in England? Oh, okay. Titania uh, does have a uh, vaguely European accent, so yeah, she goes. There you go. I'll get on the tannoy, and she gets on, um, and she says, uh, stop where you are, you're approaching a federal scout ship, I see that you're armed, so are we, lay down your weapons, we have our rights to be here. Um, okay, uh, roll, what do you want to roll, do you want to you want to roll diplomat or persuade? Hmm. Can I roll? Hmm. I could roll persuade. I was also thinking like my science because she studies zeniology, so maybe she would know like that's more like planetary. Ah, I'll just roll persuade. Okay, cool. Okay. Six, seven, eight, and then what's persuades? Uh, uh social. Social. Oh, okay, eight. Uh, they, uh, they, they, uh, one of them raises their middle finger to you and then they both, they keep m- marching for the ship. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> Bridger, he says he mounts up, he like takes out his, uh, laser rifle that was gifted to him by the crew of his, of his ship and locks and loads and says, it looks like we might have a bit of trouble in our hands. Oh, oh, don't, oh, well, uh, 
don't just sh- shoot them. They're they're Wallstonians. We can't we can't just okay. And I get my assault rifle. <laughs> just because <laughs> yes. just because they're locals doesn't mean they aren't dangerous. Why are they uh, atta- Why are they coming at us? We haven't done anything. Well, we are in possession of a multi mega credit ship. Perhaps that's all that they need. <sighs> okay. Please. Are, are you armed, or do you need a gun? I'm armed, Titania. And I have none of the uh, kind of misapprehensions or apprehensions Skid did. I'm bringing in a tech level 12. Not Gauss rifle, but Gauss pistol. Tech level 13. I didn't get into all this backwater dirty business. And I don't, I'm not very good at shooting it. I just wanted to have a gun that looked badass enough to where if I pulled it out on a table in the middle of a negotiation gone wrong, that people would just be like, whoa, back off. Okay, so, so Levi Blaze just has a gun, doesn't know how to use it, has a gun. He's got he a gun. owns one. Yes, he's he, got he, a gun. He, he can't he, shoot it, but he's got it. He owns a very expensive gun. <laughs> One of my my really good friends from from when I was growing up has a, a, a I believe he almost an almost two year old uh, and his new favorite one of his favorite things to do is when we're sitting at a table if the his son uh, grabs for like the butter knife my friend will let him get it in his hand and then shout oh my god he's got a knife <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a delight that's pretty funny uh, there's a it's, it's there's an internet funny. video too of uh, I'm sure you know it Grand there's like a kid running around a pool and somebody's like filming it and you hear the person behind camera and they're like what do you got there and he just goes a knife and she goes no and the camera just cuts <laughs> Uh, even a like, child with a knife is truly terrifying. It's <laughs> yeah, very, very funny. Um, he, he, everyone was safe. The the father was never not in control, but it was very hilarious. <laughs> so be clear in case he's watching. Um, all right. Um, so you guys are going. You grab your weapons on the bridge, and then what are you making for the airlock? Yep. Yeah, yeah I think we right. post up at the door, open the door, and we all point our guns. We and we're all, like, or oh, actually, oh. wouldn't the, maybe the cargo. The the, oh, the, the the cargo door might be the better way because like since I think you'd have to like climb up if you're like landing on the ground to get to the airlock. I think that the cargo door is the easiest way to get out if you're on the ground. Well, this sounds like a great segue for us to take a look at your ship. Oh, I didn't get cool. to show you this last week, but if I can direct your attention to roll twenty, uh, you'll see I put in up two uh, two separate schematics of the high and dry. This is a, a you know a standard. Scout courier type. Uh, you have a you know this kind of delightful view from the core rulebook, page one seventy nine, and then also a top down view that I found on um, uh, Mongoose's website. Um, so yeah, you'll see the airlock is point two on the left display. Uh, your cargo bay is actually the lower level of the ship. I don't know if there is a cargo door. It's definitely a hold, so there must be a way for you to get there. There, yeah, there must be. So you um, basically want to open up the cargo doors and jump down onto the ground and jump down. Yeah, to the ground. yeah, yeah. Because right. it's like it's two sort of different schematics. That they're, they're two different. Yeah, they're sort slightly of, different. Like the one, the the upright one, the top down one. There's there's like a full. There is like a door there, like a big you know, wide door. I will say the other thing you could do. Yeah, there is a door there. Yeah. So okay, why don't we let's get you get to the cargo bay and at that point let's roll initiative. Okay. Ooh. So remember, for initiative, you can make either a dex or an int check, depending on what you what your character's doing, what you th- what you think they would do in this. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, Titania, what'd you roll? Um, eight total. All right. And I and I use my intellect, so I think. She's trying to find a way not to just start shooting at these people and have like a gunfight, especially because they just repaired the ship and she knows that if you're going to shoot a bunch of guns at it or they take it inside, this is going to ruin like the four days of work that they just did. Um, So I think she's just trying to go through her head. How far away are they now? Can we see them? Are we like outside now? Let's say the door is still closed. If you uh, so one of you is going to have to use your use your major action to open the open the door. I would say that. You've got, you know, they're they're pretty close at this point because they've just been charging from the lake. And by the time it got you, you got down there. I think she'll, you know, press the big button to lower the door or open the open the gate, and she'll just have her annihilation style, uh, you know, whatever. I I said assault rifle, but it's called uh, it's called something else. I don't want. Do you mind if I 
get everyone else's initiative before you shooting. shoot anybody? I'm not shooting. I just, I'm preparing <laughs> okay. if necessary, but I open the door. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, Bridger, what'd you get? Uh, three. Na- snake eyes. That's, uh, that's low. No. Um, uh, Butch, what'd you get? Eight. And it was a dex roll at a minus one because, uh, Butch is trying to look as cool as possible in front of Titania. So he strikes like a sweet <laughs> pose, like right waiting for the door to open. And I think his jacket has a very good chance of being like stuck in it as it's about to open. We'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Uh, so you want to let Titania go first? If, if she said to us, I'm going to open the door, I will wait. But if she wants me to open the door, I will open the door. Either way. Okay, great. So let's let Titania go first. And just as a reminder, you get one major and one minor action or three minor actions. Major actions are attacking, applying first aid, issuing orders if you want to use leadership. Uh, Minor actions are movement, aiming, changing your stance, drawing a weapon, reloading, that kind of stuff. And I will say that opening the cargo door is going to be a major action because you got to like do the whole thing. Um, All right. So Titania, it is your turn. Yeah, I'll just, I'll look at Levi and I see that, you know, he's ready or kind of looks ready. He's posing, which I think is weird, but I open the door. Okay. And you see these three guys, uh, they're probably about, oh, you know, 20, you know, 15, 20 meters away. And they, when they open the door, they stop. Um, and they have their, you know, those who have the two of them that have guns point them at you. Uh, would you, would you like to use a minor action? Yeah, I think as a minor action, um, I do draw my weapon and like I do aim it. And I think she also free action again, just says, you know, we're here. We have permission to be here from Mr. Allen and we are armed, as you can see. And I do believe we outnumber you Um. with terms of guns, not people. (laughs) I can count. I'm a scout. I was like, are you, I was like, is she counting Kimberly? Uh, we do oh, have a we wolf. Also, <laughs> and we've got a wolf. <laughs> we've got a wolf. <laughs> um, all right, Butch, you're up. What do you want to do? Um, I'm just looking through. Um, when they stop, the journalist in me wants to get the best story. But as I'm looking through kind of minor actions available to me, um, are all the actions listed in the the core rulebook combat uh, adjacent, or, or do they allow me to use my skills like persuade and deception with them? Uh, if you want to make, if you want to like try to persuade them to put down their guns or something like that, I'm going to call that a major action because you're going to have to you know spend some time saying things. Okay, well, uh, t- talking is technically a free. Uh, shouting a warning is a free action, but if you're issuing orders, that's a major action. So I'm going to I'm going to err on the side of major action for that. Can I argue? So I have a two in persuade, a three in deception. I'd like to make my major action to be Butch's deception backing up Titania's claim that we outnumber them and they should put their <laughs> guns down because of it. Okay, what are you gonna say? I'm gonna say, or- she's right. We've got an entire armada inside of this ship. <laughs> an and he's so good at lying that they're gonna believe this. <laughs> Just let the mechanics cover up the ham-fisted improv, please. <laughs> All right. Go There's ahead. a whole bunch of other ships inside this ship. <laughs> We've so got a whole down fleet shotgun in here. And the wrench. I believe. I contain ships. multitudes. Um, <laughs> so that's modified by intellect. Uh, social, right? Persuade. Oh, social. Even better. So this is a plus six to this roll. Here it comes, baby. Oh <laughs> that's what I like to call a dirty sixteen. Oh, oh man. <laughs> Let me just put that in context for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> for skill checks, 16 plus is what you need to hit for impossible role, impossible tasks. Like it convincing a group of people that there's an armada inside of a ship. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the three guys, I'm gonna roll, but they are momentarily confused to see the most famous uh, journalist in the universe <laughs> pop up on this ship and tell them that there is an armada inside of the ship. Yeah. <laughs> and he cocks They were just checking out this volcano and all of a sudden Mike Wallace pops out and tells him <laughs> that the Spanish armada is hanging out. Mike Wallace, who at, cargo the, bay. at the end of his deception, <laughs> cocks his Gauss pistol. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, the first guy goes, 
that is that Butch Cairo? <laughs> <laughs> and the second guy goes, Oi, those guys said the ship belonged to us. You get off there. And the third guy is just eminently confused and he does nothing. He just stands up with his wrench and he's like, uh, okay, uh, Bridger, it is your turn. Okay, Bridger is going... Okay, so one one guy has a shotgun, one guy has a wrench, and one guy has what? Uh, just a pistol. Okay, so I, I'm going to do three... Okay, I'm going to do a major action to... Just... Uh, I know it's like... Uh, you encountered the crew of this ship. What did they tell you? Whatever they told you, it wasn't true. And with my minor action, I'm going to aim my laser rifle at the guy with the pistol. Okay. Uh, great. So you yeah, have some major action. Do you want to roll? Do you want to roll persuade or something to? Uh, yeah. Sort that? Yeah. I'll do a. Uh, I'll do a persuade. Uh, that is an eight. Okay, uh, he goes, They told us it belonged to us! You guys get off there, we're gonna kill you all! Kill all you! Kill you all! <laughs> shut up! <laughs> um, talk much? Mm. Yeah. You shut up too! <laughs> get off our ship! Uh, You're not okay, coming anywhere it. near this wolf! <laughs> Is Kimberly here? I guess, yeah, I, guess it, I guess it's up to Kimberly. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because she's not a, stuck in the cage anymore. She's a free free roam wolf now right oh, i'm a free no. wolf yeah. she says, <laughs> Kimberly says. i am not a number <laughs> uh all right titania what do you want to do it's your turn uh i'm i'm conflicted i uh these people were tricked by the previous crew um what skills do i have what skills can i use i think i'm gonna try to do my diplomat uh as my major action and I'm gonna sort of like put my gun at my side like hands up uh, and she's gonna say listen the crew tricked everyone Mr. Allen included they didn't take care of their job and their job was to measure the seismic waves of this caldera do you understand what that is we're on top of a volcano and we just found out it's quite active and dangerous that's what we came up here to do, and that's why we need this ship to leave this area as soon as possible. We could get you out of here too and keep you safe. Don't want to hurt you. And I'm gonna do my All diplomat right. roll. Roll, I'll roll your diplomat. That's not good. Five. <laughs> that's a uh, seven. Okay, that's not bad. Not that great either. Um, <laughs> do, you want, do you have a minor action, or do you want? Oh, you know, your minor action was to like lower your pistol, essentially. Yeah. All right, Butch, you're up. Oh jeez. Uh, oh jeez. Oh jeez. I don't want to go, Rick. Uh, so uh, I think they're still 15, 10 meters away. How far away are they? Uh, yeah, at least 15, you know, 10 meters, we'll say. Mirrors are still like outside of my Gauss pistol range. I want to do something else to kind of dissuade them. I'll do. Can I do my own uh, persuade roll to to ask them to become? Uh, we'll get them out of here. We'll give them places on the ship. We'll get rid of the armada. We'll we'll, we'll clear out <laughs> some of it for you. There'll be space for you. I promise you. Major action persuade. Sure. Okay. Right. Uh, twelve. Okay. Uh, the guy in the middle is he? I'm sorry. Yeah, the guy with the wrench. It's like turns to his friends. He's like, "This seems like a good idea." <laughs> but then the and the this guy with the shotgun is like, you can see like he doesn't know what to believe. Like he's still really rattled by the fact that he recognizes you and you're on this ship. Uh -huh. <laughs> The guy with the pistol, however, uh, he is not convinced. Oh, he, wow. He rushes forward and fires at, uh, I guess he'll, fi he'll fire at you, uh, Butch. 
Oof. Okay. Ooh. So he's gonna shoot. Uh, you can take a reaction to uh, you know you can you can dodge or you can dive for cover or parry. Though we're not in in, in melee. So you really can, your op- options are dodging or diving for cover. I'd love to dive for cover. This is perfect because it goes alongside Butch trying to look cool in front of Titania and then turning into an absolute coward and diving behind a door. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're diving like behind like the strut of the door. Uh-huh. You don't have to roll, you just inflict an, a, min- a DM minus two on me. Okay. So now he is going to, by the way, it is, I, I, was, I was like, how do you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you this later, but it is really fun to generate character generate like npcs and traveler because you just <laughs> pick their attributes and i was like i want these guys to be perfectly average so i just give them sevens across the board awesome <laughs> okay uh he fires and <laughs> misses very badly <laughs> it, cl- it the bullet pings off of the uh of the ship's hull uh, okay, it is guy number two's turn. Guy number two is the shotgun. He gets really scared and just fires off a blast, uh, but he is way out of range. So I'm going to give him a, like, I'm going to give him, you know, he, he, I'm just going to say he misses. He's yeah, so far. Yeah. He's so far. He just like, here's the gunshot. And he's like, boom. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are uh, idiots. Yeah. And then the guy with the wrench uh, just turns around and runs for the lake. Okay, good. I feel bad for that guy. Yeah. All right. Just Bridger, shut up with a wrench turn. to a gunfight. All right, so Bridger... <laughs> okay, so they're firing at him and his, and his companion, so he's weapons free, he figures. So he is going to spend one more uh, minor action to aim. Okay. So between... Last round, uh, that's a plus one. This round is an additional plus one. I have another plus one for the laser sight, and then I have a plus one for my energy, for my gun combat energy skill. So okay. that's a plus four to this roll. Who are you shooting uh, at? I'm shooting at the guy with the pistol. Okay, cool. Uh, He's going so, to try to dodge. So you take a minus one to that. Okay, so with the minus one, that's an 11. Okay, uh, you hit him. Uh, yeah, you hit him. you hit him easily. Okay. <laughs> He's put these guys come up and you just like stare down the laser sight of your of your laser rifle and just fire off a blast. Yeah. <laughs> Navy captain. <laughs> How much damage? Uh twenty-eight points of damage. Oh, Holy shit! <laughs> uh you just yeah. kill him. I just incinerate oh. his head. You just incinerate his head. <laughs> 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 okay. I uh, told you this is our ship. <laughs> don't mess with Captain Aaron Bridger. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Titania, it is your turn. <laughs> uh, Titania, wide-eyed. Uh, all right. Um, At he- that moment, actually. <gasps> oh no! Suddenly, the ground beneath you begins to shake what? and rumble. What did I tell you? And rocks begin to tumble down the sides of the crater. Anything that hasn't been locked down inside the ship is just like rattling off the shelves and onto oh the floor. Uh, and it goes on for a surprisingly long time. Uh, all of you roll recon. <sighs> Four. Okay. Nine. Mm, nine. Ten. Ten. Okay, Titania and Butch, notice the lake level, like the guy with the wrench is has gotten to the lake and is trying to swim across, but the lake level is suspiciously much lower than it was, you know, back when you back when you guys got here. Oh, what? And um, you had the ten, uh, Grant? Yeah, depending on does that modify by intellect? Yes, I believe so, right? Yeah, then ten. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, you notice a sm- like, uh, this fissure has opened up in the lake bed. Oh. oh no. And you can hear, even though you're down in cargo bay, you can hear from the bridge and a, like a like a, a buzzer, like beep, beep. Get in the ship, get in the ship now. Close the door, Titania. <laughs> I'm, All right. I'm right next to you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already in the ship. We haven't left the ship. Are you Close the attention? door is what I mean. I'm scared. <laughs> What do you, Titania, what do you want to do? Uh, Titania kicks off the body of the uh, incinerated charred man from the ship Well, doors. he's still, like, way far away. Oh, he's still, like, yeah, she's 20 feet away. She yeah. spits yeah. as far as she can. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she yells to the man with the shotgun, uh, Run toward the ship! We're going to close the doors! And uh, she 
minor actions to move inside and gets ready to close the doors once like Aaron and Levi are inside. Okay. Uh, Butch, what do you want to do? Or Levi? Jude. Uh, Jude. Jude. Uh, <laughs> Jude is going to, so change stance would be kind of like, I think I have to like stand up now after I like jump back, right? That would make sense yeah. to me. That's a minor action stand up and then uh, a minor action to ready myself by the door, considering closing it was like a, a standard major action for Titania to do it, uh, earlier. Jude will kind of get himself in a position. Okay. And you still hear from the bridge. Beep, beep, beep. Sweating beep. bullets. <sighs> uh, Not like okay. this. Guy number one is dead. Guy number two, uh, he rushes for the ship. And guy number three, uh, yeah, okay, so now smoke is rising up from that fissure that you saw open up in the lake bed. And guy number three is like halfway across the lake and he just starts backstroking back away from, uh, like, the water <sighs> levels drop and he just starts trying to get to the ship too. Uh, let's just, you know, uh, Bridger, it is your turn. Um, he still, he shifts his aim to the guy with the shotgun running the ship. He says, drop the gun, drop the gun or we'll leave you. Okay. Uh, great. All right. I'm going to pull us out of combat since it seems like you guys want to rescue the, these these fellows. Um, the guy with the shotgun drops the gun and he runs on. You know, he runs on board, and the guy with the wrench you know, leaves the. He dropped the wrench long ago, and he <laughs> he's soaking wet, but he runs on board as well. Okay. Um, what do you do? Uh, Close the door, Captain. Captain, with permission. I can I can pilot us out of here, or you can. It's up to you. It's your well, call. I, uh, captain Aaron Bridgers, I'm no captain. You're the captain. I I'm a simple mechanic and engineer. I you're can the do... captain of this ship. This ship belongs to you. You're the captain. Oh wait, this is my ship. It Everybody, is. sit down. <laughs> she screams. <laughs> <laughs> the two other dudes, not at you guys. She screams right. at the two other dudes to like get to the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then she goes, all right, yeah, you want to pilot it? And I'll uh, I'll take on any other repairs that come up. <laughs> yes, sir. And all right. Bridger salutes and makes his way up through the uh, the door, the hatch uh, up to the <laughs> upper level and, and runs towards the controls. Yeah, I run yeah. up too. So I'll refer you back to the roll 20 to take a look at the uh, the ship diagram. You know, you have these two pilot, you know, pilot and captain station up front, and then you have the office and... Uh, uh, Butch, are you up on the bridge as well? Yeah, I want to be wherever I can be useful, which is, uh, you know, as a journalist, probably anywhere. All right. Uh, well, you can be especially use- useful because the the uh, the buzzer that was sounding from the bridge is actually coming from the uh, the computer the computer systems that were doing the the analysis of the the sensor data that you gathered from the uh, the detonations oh, you placed. That actually works well because I have electronics comms one and that feels like it would fit into the same category. This is going to be actually electronics sensors, um, mm-hmm. but you can roll electronics at level zero if you want to. Oh, awesome. Okay, perfect. And jack of all trades plus two wouldn't do anything for me there. Uh, no, because we're because the, zero. the electronics zero yeah. supersedes the supersedes jack of all yeah, trades. Than, yeah. All right. Perfect. I'll go to the computer area where the buzzer is happening. All right. Give me a roll. Absolutely. Uh, eight. Okay, great. Um, it was an average check, and that is an average check. Um, so you sit down at the computer, and you you see the computer is spitting out an analysis. It's displaying tables of temperatures and gas mixes of such. It also gives you a this cool three D model of a volcano. Which shows inside of it a huge lava plume building up. Oh! And you take a quick you take a quick look at the data, and you see that pressure has been steadily mounting for some time. But a lava plug deep within the volcano's inner inner the volcano's innards has been breached, and magma is now seeking away to the surface, smashing through the plug and filling the lava tubes. The computer's best analysis is that you have two to four minutes before an eruption. Oh. They were wow. fools to ever live here. He's thinking in his head right now. How could they have put this off for so long? How do we get set up to get out here? And he yells out, Bridger, punch it. And he like totally uh, forgets yep. like he forgets like the chain of command and forgets the titanium's the <laughs> captain. And he's just like yeah. yelling in his own self-preservation. <laughs> the ground be- is now really shaking. Oh, and boy. you can see out through the out through the, the out through the glass that the lake itself is beginning to boil. 
and oh steam is just like it's just fully steaming and the plants like all those all that brush those brush forests that were around on the other side of the lake have just caught fire oh no uh all right what do you want to do uh bridger like glances at captain titania like um <laughs> permission permission to depart captain oh yeah punch it do what he said okay so he's <laughs> going to, to for you all yes cool. Is Kimberly on board? Oh, I checked. Yeah, oh, yeah, I was going to say on my turn, yeah. I check for Kimberly. Kimberly should be on board, probably by her crate. But can I make a Kimberly check? Let's make a. Let's just roll luck. Let's just roll <gasps> some luck. No, oh, how oh my dare God, you? You cruel how da- bastard! We opened up the door. Why would Kimberly be not? <sighs> this is so mean. Well, when I leave the door open to my house, my dog runs outside <laughs> sometimes <laughs> too. <laughs> Matthew's correct. The sp- in space, even dogs run outside. <laughs> Who is doing the check? You want to do it, Matthew? Oh, you want me to do it? Okay. No, 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 no. Dude, who's doing well, it? I think you have to do it, Sydney. It's your it's dog. It's your dog. It's your dog. It's your wolf. Okay, okay, okay. Six and one. Seven. Okay. Kim Lee is on board. Oh, okay. my God. <laughs> All right. So, Skid, uh, you have an option. You can take off without doing it. Now, you never got to do your test flight. So right. this will be a, you have a dice modifier minus two to all pilot checks. Oh, man. And I think on the bridge in front of uh, Skid's character and Sydney's character, Butch has flung up a countdown with like a schematic of the lava coming to the top and it's illuminating their faces as they make this tough <laughs> decision. Um, you, you could, if you Skid, if you wanted to, you can take uh, what will be about 90 seconds to do f- pre-flight checks and I'll reduce that modifier to a minus one. Uh, I, I think he's Bridger, I think he's safety, safety first. It's been a while anyway. So yeah, I think he's going to do some pre-flight checks. All right. Roll a pilot, electronics, or engineering, and do not take the modifier for this roll. Okay. I'm going to do pilot. Okay. Skid, what Uh, is your, what is your pilot? Uh, plus one. Uh, so without the modifier, that's a six. Okay, it takes you a little longer than oh, ninety seconds. No. You're trying. You're trying to remember the checklist. The lake is now like full on boiling. Like oh, you can, see, you can just see it like just bubbling like crazy. The fire is all like the the brush fire is all around you. But after about two minutes, two and a half minutes, you're able to lift off. And as you lift off, you can, like the, this is this hell zone that the crater has become. At that moment, the ship is rocked by what feels like an explosion. Ooh. But not from the caldera itself. Like, the, you, the ground didn't explode right, right beneath you. Um, okay, uh, Grant, if, if Butch is still sitting at the computer systems, roll an electronics sensors to see what's going on. See if you can get any more information from your model. What the heck? Okay, electronic sensors. So just a plus zero on this check. Here it comes. Oh, 11 on the die. Uh, <laughs> so plus my analog. 11. Uh, yep. 12, okay. 12. You see on your monitor, on your, your 3D model that this, a, a chunk of the southwestern side of the mountain has opened up and the lava is just f- like full on flowing down the side of the mountain. So it's whatever, it, whatever route the lava flume you know, found, it didn't explode from the top. It exploded from kind of from the side. That was the <sighs> quickest path out. Wow. Um, okay. Um, a dark cloud, you, you get up in the air and yeah, you can see it. The, the plume is you know, kind of running down the flank of the mountain. Um, all right. As you take off, you get a transmission from Central Lake by way of the Starport Orbital Beacon. Uh, do you answer? Yeah. Okay. It is Minister Greener, uh, Minister of Off-World Affairs, Public Relations, and Fisheries. Uh, he goes, oh, uh, Hydra, is that you? What's going on? What's happening? Mr. Allen, this is the high and dry Titania Westland here. Uh, the volcano, the inactive volcano that you sent us to is quite active at the moment. I would say mostly active. Oh, oh I'm getting reports of ash clouds, but uh, I don't have anything. Uh, what's going on? Did you finish the survey job? Can you tell us who's in danger? What? How bad is it? I am patching you over and I patch him to, uh, to, uh, please. This is so, a, I'm patching it a butch. 
<laughs> this is Levi Blaze, investigative journalist. I'm very famous. <laughs> I've been investigating. At, at the scene of the explosion. <laughs> at the scene of the explosion. Of the explosion. <laughs> Tensions yes. are high here in the caldera. I'm flying above the scene in a helicopter right now. I don't know why. I'm in a helicopter when I have a ship right nearby, but it's incredible. The plumes of smoke and lava coming from the caldera right now are overwhelming our sensory day. And if we don't escape soon, and the rest of the planet for this matter, we're all dead. <laughs> Back to you in the studio. <laughs> you, can you transmit your can you transmit your data? <laughs> he's, he's very alarmed by the way. You think the entire planet's going to explode from one volcano. Uh, but Yeah, he um, he, I, he sends it to him if he can. Okay. And at that, you're also getting, you know, Titania, you, you're, you're seeing transmissions come in from uh, all of the small towns. Like, all mm. the towns have, you know, they know they, when they saw you take off. You know, you're getting transmissions from the Starport, from Throlton, from Salbari, uh, from the, you know, from the, the settlements too, you know, Barvin, Hopal. Um, and, and at that moment, you happen to look over across the control panel and you notice a red light on the jump control board. Jump drive is inoperable. So you can, so you can't, you can get away from the, get away from the eruption, but you can't necessarily get off planet. Um, okay, at that moment, um, so basically, uh, Minister Greener is still talking to Butch, and he basically he asks you to do a flyby of the mountain uh, and just give a vision, and, like transmit a, you know, a visual via the starport beacon, so that he can get a you know a, a, a look at it. And you have to get relatively close. There's a now. There's a thick haze. There's a big ash cloud forming. <laughs> um, so you, you're going to only take the minus one to your piloting checks because you did the pre-flight checks. However, okay. all piloting checks are difficult in this environment. Oh no! What does that mean? It means you have to roll a ten or higher. <sighs> That's Shit. very almost impossible. Um, oh. Also, not making it worse is that the missile alerts are going off because of the odd rock that's being flung in your direction. The computer is reading them as missiles. <laughs> and you're like, oh, oh. No. I'm trying to shut those. Titania's <laughs> trying to like shut. She's flipping a bunch of switches. She's cutting wires and rewiring. And she's like, it's not a missile, you stupid ship. <laughs> shut uh, that off or shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So do you want to, will you take up Minister Greener's call and do a flyby of the mountain? Uh, Minister Greener, uh, I mean, Minister Allen, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is Minister Greener. It's Titania Weslin again. Is it not enough that we send you the schematics and, and, and our findings? Do we have to do this flyby? We have two, two Wesleyans on the ship and we're trying to get them out of here safely. <laughs> there are, two there are students from Wesleyan. There are two <laughs> Wesleyan students on board two the ship. students from Wesleyan <laughs> University. <laughs> It's the Wesleyan crew what they, team. What are they called? <laughs> Walston. Walstonians. Walstonians. They I went like to Wesleyan. <laughs> but I think they went to Wesleyan. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. It explains their general assholeness. <laughs> no offense to anyone who went to, to Wesleyan. No offense. Um, um, I mean, he basically the minister explains to you he's trying to get an idea of like you know the, he, they need to be able to order evacuations or like they don't know what to do they just need they need some they need more data so if you can do a flyby of the mountain they would greatly appreciate it. Uh, Captain, uh, what say ye? Do you think you'll be able to or? Uh, it's very difficult. I've never flown uh, anything in the scout service before, and it's not in the it's not, it's still not in great shape. The conditions are unfavorable, but you're the captain now. Look at me. Look at me. Yes? You're the captain now. (laughs) Wow. I uh, suppose I am. Uh, Mechanically, Captain Aaron Bridgers, I do have a two in piloting. If you'd like me to try my hand at the flyby, and then we can switch back. Please, take take the controls, please. All right. Kimberly, sit. Kimberly has is hiding underneath underneath the control panel. Good wolf. All right, uh, everybody, hold on. I'm I might really fuck this one up. Oh, this is so awesome! So Titania f- sits down for the first time at the controls of her new ship, the High and Dry, in the middle of a volcanic <laughs> eruption. She's like grip, grips the yoke. All I right. grip the yoke. Um, all right, here we go. Not looking good for the first one. <laughs> Terrible! 
Oh no! <laughs> What's your roll? Uh, that's gonna be a that's a three, four, five, um, minus one, so a four. Okay, you you don't crash or anything, but you can't get close enough to get a visual. Um, I'll let you try again. Uh, uh, she goes. All right, all right. <sighs> focus, Titania. Focus. Remember your training. You like the ship, uh, like you're, the ship bucks in the in the ash cloud, and you're, you, you can't control it to get to get close okay. enough. You can't get yeah. All right, all right. Hold on. She's gripping the. She's like the leather, digging her nails into the leather. Why don't you right. both roll and you know, Skid? I'll let you. I'll let the, like if you. It's like that moment when like the co-pilot and the pilot both have to take the yoke. Okay, yeah. And I'll let like you assist Titania. And I don't Let's, know like what the is because it do, it doesn't say that. Ordinarily, I would say that. Imagine that dexterity would be the modifying characteristic, but it doesn't actually say. So, can I use my education, like my years of of experience in the naval service? Can I call on that to do the piloting check you, instead of you're my You're Sully Sullenberger for the second Tom Hanks <laughs> movie reference in a row. Exactly. Yeah, go for it. Okay. Uh, ten. Amazing. Right. I rolled double sixes. Oh so, yeah. So awesome. I think together. It's it's what it took. I think that it was so we were fighting it so hard with like these hot gusts of wind that I truly needed like four sets of hands to like pull this thing up and then bring it back down at the right angle. Yeah, All right, cool. You do a, you execute a beautiful bank around the around the volcano and then you kind of flip op- over top of the, the caldera so you can get a like look down up oh, through awesome. the windshield to get a look down there and between your you, you're able to to transmit a visual and then between what you see and the the ship sensors. Here's what you know. Uh, there's a small amount of lava now in the crater itself, and some is leaking from outlets on the higher slopes. Now, that's not a significant hazard unless you're in the immediate area. There's a major eruption lower down on the southwestern face of the mountain, where part of the mountainside has just collapsed, and a river of lava is pouring out. And the land slopes generally down to sea from the erupting side of the volcano, offering the lava flow a direct path to the sea. So the town of Salbari, I'll direct you to roll 20. I pulled up the map of the southern part of Settlement Island. Um, and you'll see, you know, here's Mount Salbari. And a little higher is the town of Salbari, about 20 kilometers to the northwest. So they're mm-hmm. not in real, any real danger at the moment. Uh, but there are several settlements directly in the path of the lava flow. And with our, within hours, the computer estimates, all of those will be swamped. Uh. Um, you, so you transmit this, Minister Greener uh, says, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, he, and he's, I'm issuing an emergency broadcast for all inhabitants of those settlements to evacuate to Salbari immediately. And if people, if Salbari does eventually become threatened, we can evacuate the rest of them by rail. Also, I've just gotten word that a fishing submarine, the ocean's bounty has surfaced and is making all haste to the settlement of Barvin on the coast, where it will evacuate as many people as possible. And you get another transmission at that moment. And it's from Dictator Masterton himself. Whoa. Uh, and the sound quality is very poor. It sounds like he's on some kind of fast moving vehicle. Uh, and he, uh, you know, he's, uh, hello. That's not his voice. Hello, I'm Dictator Masterton. I don't know. I'm just trying to do a really like, really like aggressive RP, but I can't. Uh, okay. <laughs> You're doing great. It's good. It's Thank good. you. <laughs> It's like I just remember watching like all the people on the on the crown talking about when they were learning that accent and they were just practicing. The word one is one, 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 one. 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 <laughs> I'm on a he goes, he goes, I'm on a grab car headed for South Bari where I can set up a command post. And I have just, you know, I've for, I've heard the minister's evacuation orders and I've seconded them. From my command post in South Bari, I can send some grab vehicles to pick up any stragglers, but. The trains and the submarines won't be able to get everyone out of Barvin. And many people will avi- arrive at the train station after the trains will have to depart. Travelers, I need your help. I need an estimate of the lava flow rate, so we know how much time we have to get everyone out of Barvin. And I would also ask that you report on the condition of the road in general. I'm told the radar terrain mapping on your ship can help us predict the best routes for endangered personnel. So essentially he's asking you to do three tasks. One, map the terrain and model the lava flow path, which will require a couple of overflights. Shouldn't be too difficult. Okay. Uh, establish a flow rate for the lava river, river headed for Barvin. Uh, so you, again, this is going to require some kind of like 
piloting check to get near the lava flow so that you can use the ship sensors to analyze it. And then monitoring conditions. Uh, this is the most difficult one. You're going to need to return to the mountain and place sensors uh, in short holes drilled in the rock, which will allow for an estimate of how long the eruption will go on for. Oh, no. <laughs> Sh- hang up the call. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just go. Let's just back. go. He calls back. Uh, we got disconnected. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, now I'm doing your voice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's rude. Sorry. Uh, uh, this dictator, this is Tanya Wesland, and we'll get on it. And I hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Why okay. do people keep calling? <laughs> you're the only <laughs> ship in the air. Like you're the I only, call you're back. The... I call back. <laughs> Sorry, we got disconnected. Bad connection. I, th- I believe it's on your end. Uh, uh, I'm in a moving grab car. <laughs> better will keep you your eyes us? on the better keep your eyes on the road. Uh, <laughs> aye, we will. Yes, the three things. The um, the issue is we're still making repairs on the ship. It was left in not a a great state from the previous crew, so we'll we'll do our best. You're our only hope. You're our only <laughs> hope. I've never heard that before. That's quite original. I'm going to write that down. Could you repeat it? Oh, we got are disconnected. You, I hang are up. you mocking me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate talking to the leaders. They never really know what's going on. They always tell you to find out. Anyway, Captain, um... I uh, take this and I give the yoke to Aaron Bridgers a whole ship to her to okay. the side. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You hear screams from the back as the, yeah. uh, the, the Wallstonians like crash into the wall. I said sit down! <laughs> it's hard to uh, man a ship. All right. Um, so the, the mapping the terrain and the lava and modeling the lava flow path uh, is, e- is relatively easy. So you just need to make a couple overflights. Uh, these are actually going to just be average piloting checks, even in the conditions. You can get high enough that you can kind of you avoid the cloud. Um, so you know, just need to make uh, two average piloting checks and then I need an electronics sensors check. Um, so Butch, I'm sure you could handle that if sure. uh, the other two can handle the piloting checks. Uh, okay, you wanna each do one piloting check, Captain? Yeah, yeah and I imagine we're like, they're, we're co-piloting together where somebody's like doing one thing, I'm doing thrusters as, as he's doing the yoke. That's cool, I like that. Yeah, like Galaxy's Edge. Yeah! Smuggler's Run, I mean. Smuggler's Run. Uh, ooh. Natty 12 on ooh. 2d6. Ooh. All right. Nailed it. Seven. Um, That's a seven on the dice. And then, sorry, what am I adding? Is it still with a minus? No, don't take the, don't take the dice bar record. You're kind of, I, I imagine you're coming up out of the, out of the cloud to kind of survey and, you know, look down at the lava from high above. Uh, so that's a nine. Okay, great. Uh, you're fine. Uh, Butch, could you make an electronics sensors check for us? Just sweating. He's like, why isn't the J-Drive working? Why isn't the goddamn J-Drive working? I'm not dying on this stupid planet. Uh, 10. Okay. Nice. Yeah. All right. So you're analyzing what comes out of the sensors, and you, the computer estimates you have roughly, Barvin has roughly one to two hours before it's totally consumed. <gasps> wow. Um, okay. So now... Uh, You need to, well, (laughs) oops, I read my notes wrong. Before you know that, you have to go monitor the lava flow rate. So uh, you can't Ah. hover above the lava flow, it's too hot. Like the, the, it would just be too, like you wouldn't be able to, the the heat would disrupt your, the ship's ability to to fly. Um, But you can fly parallel to it. So give me a piloting check and then we'll need either an electronics check or a science planetology check. Titania, Bridger, I get the sense that we don't need to do this because we already have all the information we could possibly <laughs> need. Damn it. Damn it. Let's skip this part. It's safer. <laughs> Just roll the damn checks. <laughs> we don't have uh, corners in the Imperial Navy. <laughs> Butch. Uh, I know I'm having fun, so I'm going to do it. Uh, what, can I do the electronics if you do the piloting, or who wants I'll to do, do it? I'll okay. do the piloting. I'll do the piloting. Uh, Natty 11. Yeah, oh. okay. You, so Bridger just brings it in, cuts the, thru- you know, cuts the thrusters down, the engines kind of flare, and you, sit, and you just kind of very slowly are like just flying next to the lava flow on your, towards Barvin. Cool. And I'm uh, back with Butch in like the con- more the control area for the engineering stuff, flipping switches, and I got an 8. Okay, nice. great. That's enough to know that, yes, Barvin has roughly one to two hours before it's totally consumed. Sorry. 
I concur. I, I turned to Butch. I concur. Your your foundings from before. Thank you for peer reviewing my study. Okay. You're, you're good at what you do. I'll give you that. I clap him on the back. He blushes. Okay. And turns and away. <laughs> Stop. Would you like Would you like a cup of noodles? Um, all right. It must so. must be autumn on this world. Love <laughs> <laughs> is in the air. Uh, uh, all right. <laughs> We ignore that. Uh, <laughs> so uh, now the last thing he needs you to do is monitor conditions of the mountain. So yeah, so this, what you need to do is land on the side of the mountain, essentially. So you need to find find a suitable landing spot and then send somebody out to place the sensors. Now this, the air raft would have been ideal for this task because you yes. wouldn't need to land. But those motherfuckers from the previous <sighs> crew stole the air raft and you don't have it. So you gotta Air land the ship. are so cool, though. Also, that like I'm so angry. They're so cool. They're flying cars. They're yeah. awesome. So is there? Oh wait, is this a trick? Is this one of those trick questions? Is there another air raft on the ship? No. no. Would you take? Like, no. Would you like to take some of that one two hours before Barman is totally consumed to search? No. <laughs> yeah, let's search the ship thoroughly for a, I ask, I ask a mythical Kimberly. second air raft. Kim- Kimberly, where's the other air raft? She, where, where is like, it? Kimberly's just like trembling beneath the. Kimberly's trembling oh. beneath the uh, the control panel. Oh, Kimberly, right. that's better. Kimberly does not care for volcanic eruptions. Mm. Captain, mm. I found this dog hover suit. I think if we put it on Kimberly <laughs> and throw Kimberly out of the cargo door, I slap, I slap him. <laughs> yeah. How dare you put Kimberly's life in danger like that? I'm so sorry. I won't hear that again. You shut, you shut your wet mouth. I close the door. <laughs> Okay, um, wow. so who's gonna do what? Who's gonna land? Who's gonna who's gonna land the ship? Who's gonna go out and set? Uh, basically, you need to print. You need to like drill into the hole, these short holes, and put sensors in there so you can get more accurate and da- data about the eruption and what's gonna happen. What skill would be involved? So, piloting the land, and then what skill would we need to employ to do the sensor thing? I'm not even gonna require a, a skill check. You just for, do it. You just okay. do it. It just takes okay. time. Um, I was gonna say because i do have two in vac suit and one in engineer which is life support so i feel like maybe i would feel more comfortable like going out in the vac suit to do it because i'm super familiar with like walking off ship yeah you would also notice like from the like from the the, between the ash cloud and the heat like you probably gonna want a vac suit uh or at least some kind of mask so you can breathe because you know it's gonna be and see for that matter yeah um but yeah if you have i would say maybe yeah maybe you are ideally suited to See what I did there? Uh, yeah, to nice. to placing the sensors. If you yeah. if you if someone can land the ship, I'll try. Yeah. Perhaps you will want to get buttoned up there, Captain. I, put I the can suit land on to as close as I can. Hold the hood down, Pat Kimbley. All right. Oh, uh, ten on the power okay. to land. That's a difficult. That's difficult. So yes, you're able. To like you're you pi- you're piling through the word that you're like rocks are kind of pinging off the side as the you know the, the eruption continues, <laughs> the, you're piloting through the ash, through the heat, through the through the wind force, and you're able to kind of pull the ship in, and you find it you find a small outcropping that's big enough for the the courier, and you drop it and you kind of drop it down. It's a rough landing, but everybody you 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 do it, and you uh, and you're able to get get out there. Cool. All right, so Titania goes out to place the charges. Yeet, and, sorry, place yeet. the sensors. I'm popping those sensors in. It's a good drill sound. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay. Um, it takes you roughly 30 minutes, uh, but eventually you're able to get back to the ship. Uh, and okay. Uh, roll electronics again, Butch, or if anyone wants to roll electronic sensors to analyze the data you're getting from the new sensors. Uh, Butch uh, finishes maintenance on the rocket suit for the dog and then goes over the whole <laughs> electronic <laughs> sensor. Uh, wow, that's terrible. That is a four. Uh, okay. Um, anyone else want to try? <laughs> uh, I'll give it a go. Maybe we walk in and he's like, I can't read it. I can't read like, this data. Oop. Uh, that's an eight. Okay. Uh, seven for me. All right. Between the three no, eight. of you. Sorry, eight again. Okay, great. So between the three of you, you're able to see that the lava flow rate is actually dropping right now. Oh. Which is good news. Likely a plug has formed in the mountain somewhere. 
Hmm. However, pressure has been building underneath, and this kind of plug, you know, will most likely be short-lived. And when it breaks, it will be like a dam bursting, and mm-hmm. the lava flow will massively increase, and a chunk of the mountain might quite literally be blasted off. And computer modeling shows that the plug is going to fail within minutes. A massive eruption is imminent, and a huge cloud of super hot ash and gas will be ejected from the mountain and will hurtle out across the coastal plain, and the town of Barvin will be destroyed, and anyone in it will die. The good news is, though, that Salbari will, will likely not be too badly affected, though ash, a lot of ash will probably fall on it. And it's possible eventually the town will have to be abandoned, but, and that will be major stress for the world government, but it is not going to get hit with the explosion that's going to hit Barvin. At that moment, a transmission comes in. It's dicta- Dictator Masterson again, or as I seem to have written in my notes, Dictator Masterson. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, hi and dry. Come in, come in, come in. So Tanya Wesland, uh, this, is, this is really bad for Barvin. Yes, we've, we've just gotten your transmission. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we already sent it. Good, and I turn around. Good job, bud. <laughs> Good job, nice. bro. No, I've done this before. This isn't my first rodeo. Uh, Very good at sending transmissions. <laughs> a cargo train has just arrived at Barg and I, Barg and I've ordered it to load up everyone at the station and leave immediately at maximum speed. But there are people who won't get to the station in time. The ocean's bounty, the submarine, will take anyone aboard and submerge, which will hopefully keep them safe from the eruption and the lava flow. But there are two groups we can't get to in time. There's an agricultural settlement to the south. Now, you, you've, done ex- you've done extraordinary things for the population of this world, and I cannot thank you enough, but I must ask you to do more. I'm not ordering you, but there are 11 people, humans and Varga, some of them just children in this agricultural community. They're jammed in some, to some ground vehicles, struggling up a dirt road. The other group is beyond our help. That's just the decision I've had to make. In a small population, he just gets really defensive about it. Such as ours, I'm acquainted with much of most of the planet's residents, and this pair is particularly stubborn. Their daughter is on my staff, actually. Hmm. But this is a numbers game, and you, you can save those 11, and no one can save those two. Wait. Was their daughter Je- Jenny? What was her name? Jennifer? <laughs> Wasn't there a Varger who helped us up the mountain? Oh, Jenny. No, oh, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> No, Jenny actually uh, is, uh, she lives in Salbari. Oh, thank God. It's not. All right. Never mind. I thought it was Jenny. She's going to be all right, everybody. Oh. Jenny will be okay. Thank you God. You love Jenny. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we love Jenny. I don't think she liked us much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, here's a dis- you have to make a decision. Do you want to save these people in the settlement? If you do, there's a chance you could get caught in the blast, but there's also a good chance you can get away in time. Uh, wait, but we don't get to save the other people. He was like, they're beyond help. That was not an option. That's what that's what the dictator's telling you. And actually, in fact, another transmission comes in at this moment. The scout ship, scout ship. This is Walson One. Get the big group. I'm going after my mom and dad. <gasps> I can get there before you. Good luck. What? Who's that? And the it's dictator's like, we're like playing Star Fox 64. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. That's my chauffeur. This is just kind of the stubborn, idiotic, half crazy stunt you'd expect from... He cuts himself off before he says anything too racist. <laughs> oh, but yeah, wow. for the moment, like if you like somebody see, like seems like she that the, his chauffeur has taken the limo, uh, the air raft limo, and is uh, on their way to pick up her parents. However, you still you can decide. You don't have to go save this agricultural settlement, but uh, you could. <sighs> I think I think we have to try. A bridger is just like, this is, we have to do this. Aye. What do you say, team? You want to maybe die from a volcano today? (laughs) Wouldn't be the first time, nor would it be the last for Levi Blaze. I don't, I don't understand what that means. Yeah, I'm confused. mm. You keep saying stuff like, I've done this before, but I I don't think you have. I die in volcanoes for breakfast and drown (laughs) in tsunamis at night. Let's do this. Levi Blaze is on the case. <laughs> back, to you, back, to, back to you at the station, Tom. Back to you. Back to you at the station. Back to you. All right. I put it in reverse. <laughs> I, back, I back up down the mountain. Yeah, start, start rolling down on, like, sleds. All right. 
It's um, got a backup actually, I'm camera, sorry. Sydney. You don't have to look backwards. Oh, you're right. I just, I'm so used to it. this new ship is great. I can just look straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I misspoke. So the settle the the agricultural settlement, those the people from there actually were on their way to Barbon when the they got the evacuation order was sounded. Uh, mm -hmm. Ironically, they probably would be safe uh, now if they had stayed in put, they had stayed put. But now they're on the way to Barvin, they're actually in danger. So you actually have to go to Barvin. Um, okay. And actually, let me refer you to a different map on roll 20. And this one will show you the projected oh, lava flow. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's oh, cool. Oh, shoot. Yeah. Wow. So uh, let, me have a, let me get a piloting check to take off <laughs> before the eruption happens. Okay. And you can make your way to Barvin. I'll try to, I'll try to take off. You don't mind, Captain. No, please. Oh, I'm crushing these. Nine. Okay. Hey. Yes. You're able to take off. Uh, you're, you know, it's still rocking. It's still not a smooth takeoff, but you're able to get off, get up uh, and make your way to Barbum. And I think so in the meantime, you... I'm clearing out space for all the people because we have the bedrooms, but I'm like securing everything so we can just like load everybody in as fast as we can. Yeah, actually, if you if you want, I can, you know, I'll pull you back to the, the schematic of the ship, uh, but you can see... Yeah, you've got some berths. You've got four, you know, you know, six staterooms. Uh, mm -hmm. Each of them have a set of bunk beds. So essentially, you've got eight, uh, eight berths. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get to when we get to we'll get to that when we get to that. Okay. Um, for now, um, you guys get to Barvin. The settlement here is very small. Uh, it's just three dwelling complexes and a rail platform, really. Uh, and there's a wow, that's so concrete. Soviet sounding. It is so Soviet sounding. <laughs> It's all concrete. Yeah, it's uh, like could Kamchatka somewhere. Like yeah, seriously, actually, that's a that's a great, yeah, it's actually a great comparison. Um, yeah, there's a concrete dock with a semi underground warehouse and a small crane for unloading boats and submersibles. And in fact, you can see a submarine out in the bay and a train mm. disappearing northwards from the station. Oh, uh, wow. But the people down there are rushing around in panic. You know, some are trying to rush after the train and others are trying to break into a nearby dwelling complex to take shelter. You know, they're clearly desperate and terrified. Uh, you spot a what would good be a good landing area between the dock and the station that's flat, probably used for, like I said, loading and unloading. Uh, the tennis court. Yeah, it's a tennis court. It's a, they have <laughs> there's a, a fascination with tennis on right. Boston. <laughs> yeah, a cultural fascination with tennis. Uh, but you're gonna have to roll a piloting check to avoid hitting anything or anybody. Okay. Sh shall I, Captain, or would you like to do the honors? Uh, no, please. It looks like you're you're clear for landing. Co-captain. And crushing these again. Calls on all of his experience. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's a 12. Nice. Okay. Crushing so these. Really, definitely. Captain Bridger gives a little pitch, a little yaw, a little roll, Ooh. and very gently lands the high and dry on its landing skids on this concrete area, avoiding crushing anybody or nearby cars. <laughs> awesome. Um, at that moment, uh, so a bunch of the people just rush for the high and dry. Some people are just frozen in a state of panic. Uh, what do you do? I get on the intercom. All right. Citizens gonna, of this Walston. This is going to be a leadership or a persuade role. But yes, Tar, go oh ahead. Oh, boy. Maybe I should have Butch get on. Okay, so here's what I do. I go, citizens of Walston, this is your captain, Titania Wesland of the Scout Service. Uh, I have Butch Cairo here with me to tell you how this is going to work. And I give it to Butch. This is better persuade. These switching personas now. This is Butch Cairo, world renowned world traveler, here to let you know that this is not the season's hottest destination. Well, actually, it'll be too hot. If you don't get on this ship soon, you're going to be burnt to a crisp. So buckle up and get aboard, buckos. Butch Cairo <laughs> signing out. <laughs> okay. Oh, I can't believe they got Butch Cairo to do that automated message. Yeah, seriously. And, and also. Wow. Form a, a, a line at the cargo doors and we will let you in and, and check you for injuries. If you don't have time, trample your loved ones to no, death. No, no, <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> he's, he's kidding. He's kidding, everyone. It's a, just a little Sorry. joke from Butch Cairo. You love Women him. and children last. <laughs> Stampede inside with all ace. JK, JK. <laughs> just it's every, it's that's every classic person for but, themselves. That's classic Butch Cairo humor. <laughs> the more of you that are crushed underfoot, the more room we'll have in the end. <laughs> <laughs> All right, roll persuade, Butch. 
Okay, here it comes. Come on, baby. All right, all right, all right. That is uh, modified by my social, right? Mm -hmm. So that's yes. good. That's a 13. Nice. All right. <laughs> yes, you were able to, despite, the, the, no one, the orderly fashion thing just doesn't happen. They all just start screaming and rush for the ship. <laughs> um, but even the ones who seem frozen in panic do follow because they, 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 they know their time is up. Um, C so Captain, they run, they run faster when they're scared. <laughs> yeah, that's what we have to you frighten know, them. I suppose they do. Good job, Butch. <laughs> Thank you. He just knows it's people. He just knows how people. He knows how people tick. <laughs> um, okay, so you uh, there is eleven people total, right? Let me just check my notes here. Uh, <laughs> talk amongst yourself. Mm -hmm. I think there might be a couple less after they stamp stamp <laughs> each other. So, and yeah, also, I think we might have. To Tanya Cleared goes up to the uh, Walstons we have on the ship and she's like, you be nice to everyone, all right? <laughs> Just because you were on the ship first doesn't mean that you're higher in social status than them. You be nice to the Vargers and you be nice to everybody on the ship. Now sit down and buckle your seatbelt. Uh, okay. Um, yes, okay, so you have, you can get eight people strapped into the berths. The bridge chairs all have seats, so you guys are okay. Uh, engineering has emergency crash seats, so you could feasibly stick the overflow in. Let's see. Let's look at the. Let's look at the. Uh, at the the plan here. I'm going to say there are two crash seats in engineering. So let's see. You have eight. So you still have some people who won't be able to strap down, um, but you'll be able to get most of them on board. Uh, however, at that moment. <laughs> As everyone is loading on, and you put the Wallstonians, the the two guys, the two jerks whose friend you murdered, uh, you put them to work, uh, and you're mayday, mayday. This is Walston One. The car is damaged. The drivers are failing. Windows are cracked. Can't see anything. I think I'm heading for the sea, but we're losing speed and altitude. Is anyone there? Please help us. Help us. Quick, send us your send us your uh, send us your ship's uh, coordinates, and we'll tell you which direction to head in, and then we'll head toward you. At that moment, the volcano erupts. <gasps> oh no! And a vast oh. cloud of superheated gas, ash, and rock fragments blast clear. I mean, it's truly a spectacular sight. You see it from your landing spot. And boulders and whole chunks of the mountain are flung into the air. Uh, the computer is telling you about f the cloud is about four to five minutes away, and it's pretty high. So making a climb over it would be a difficult proposition. So you know that basically your options now are running ahead of the flow out to sea and then submerging the ship, which you don't want to go too deep because it's not exactly, this, a, a, keeping air, keeping an airlock and water out of your important systems are two very different pro, you know, propositions. However, Walston One is, is down and they need help. So what do you want to do? Well, is everybody on the ship now? Can we close the doors? You can close the doors, yeah. Psh, close the doors. Um, <laughs> I look to uh, Butch, and I look to Captain Aaron. Um, I think, well, I think Bridger uh, is like, uh, with your permission, I think I'll take off now. We can decide what to do in the air. Aye, yes, uh, let's... Just so he does his pre-flight checks again. He's there for a, a shortened now because he just landed. His engine's still spooled up. Whoop, takes off. Um, he turns like once they got like 50 meters off the ground. He says like, well, we can't stop now. We have to we have, uh, getting used to this uh, saving innocent lives thing. Butch? Is it the, we, we, we are to believe that the captain of this plane, uh, this, this ship, and his family are Varger and have been mistreated for too long? Yes. The chauffeur, I mean, the chauffeur, is, is a, it's, it's an air raft, essentially. Yeah. The chauffeur took the air raft and went to save her parents. Um, but then they got trapped on the road. Uh, they got trapped somewhere. The, ship is dam the air raft is damaged. It's going down. They've been marginalized for too long, Captain. It's time. <laughs> To go do what we can to make sure they live another day for a more just tomorrow. Let's try and save them. <laughs> All right. I turn to the. <laughs> he turns. The he turns to camera two and gives a <laughs> and gives a very. 
<laughs> oh no, that not. was candid. I didn't know anyone was watching. <laughs> <laughs> Who brought cameras on the ship? I said, no cameras on my ship. Um, I think I'm she Ron announces. I'm Burgundy. <laughs> I'm. <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. Um, she announces to the ship, uh, attention residents of Walston, uh, welcome aboard the high and dry and hopefully we'll stay that way. Uh, all, right, all right. Um, anyway, <clears throat> anyway, I'm your, uh, Captain Titania and we are going to rescue a few more people. So if you could stay calm, stay in your seats, uh, refreshments will be coming around, uh, via a wolf in a little propelled <laughs> dog suit. <laughs> uh, Thanks, everybody. Oh. If you need anything, just <laughs> knock on the door. Um, we'll come out. Everyone, look, you, 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 we cut back to the uh, the state rooms, and everyone's just like kind of glancing at each other, very confused. <laughs> There's a wolf? A wolf? Did they knock on their door? <laughs> <laughs> and stay in your house! <laughs> Children are screaming, crying. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you're going to go save save the uh, the, the Varger? I'm gonna try. Yeah. All right. The sky is now black with dust and falling ash, oh, and you're gonna need man. to use the instruments to fly to track the limos transponder. Uh, but when you arrive, you get there, and someone is firing flares from the emergency kit, but the radio is dead. So you're gonna need to roll a piloting check to basically land blind. Okay. I will attempt that. Oh, oh, ooh. Uh, that's a six. Oh, okay. Can I aid? You, can I aid? I'm gonna say you try to land, but you can't. You just like you can't do it. You have to like you get you wave yourself off, and you have to try again, which will just take more time. So if you want okay. to try to tell you, I'm. Or no, I mean you could do it again. I was gonna say if I can aid somehow, but just just uh, try to land again. Okay. Yeah. Just like foam, just uh, hits a an outcrop thing that he wasn't aware of. Okay, uh, that is an 11. Okay, you are, you're able to land even though you can't see anything. Uh, the, you uh, open up the airlock, maybe one of you runs down to open up the airlock in a vac suit and you see the three Varger just start stumbling toward the ship and the youngest, who you assume is the chauffeur, has been hit in the face by fragments of windshield and is like just there's just a Oof. bunch of blood just streaming down her face, blinding her. Um, but they do, you're able to get them aboard, like the, uh, the ash is just blowing every which way. It's just almost, you can barely see anything. It's, it's only because of the flares you can even see people approaching, but they're able to get on board. You close the airlock and all right. At this point, given the time it's taken to do all this, you have basically three options. Uh, you can climb as high as possible to try to get above the cloud. They think that's pretty dubious. Uh, you can run for the sea and try to submerge, but now you've you've flown into the cloud, so you can't like outrunning it may not be the best, may not be all that possible. Okay. Or you can try to hit the cloud head on. And this is my favorite word that I get to use today: pyroclastic cloud. Mm -hmm. Yes, good try word. To hit the pyroclastic word. cloud head on, and maybe the aerodynamics of the scout courier might lessen the impact because you'll be you'll you'll have your strongest axis point pointing at the threat. Mm -hmm. So, what do you want to do? Whoa, man. That's the like... captain's call. Oh, I... Ah. Uh... Shit. <laughs> Fuck. Ah. Uh... <laughs> All right. Well, my concerns are this. We can't climb high enough. The ship's not in good enough condition. My other concern is we can't hit the cloud head on. The ship's not in good enough condition. Ah. Uh... And I forgot the second option because it seemed dumb. <laughs> <laughs> trying to run into trying to beat the beat the, bla the blast out to sea. Yeah, I don't think we'll do that because the ship's not in good enough condition. <laughs> uh, uh, so just roll, give up. You're, you're saying roll engineering, Titania. Yeah, I was going to say, can I roll all me? Of the, I wanted all of the alarms, like every alarm possible, is blaring <laughs> on the ship. <laughs> okay, uh, five, five, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, you you are fairly certain that really the only hope you have is try to hit it head on. Yeah. It's the risk even, it's high risk, high reward, but you think the others are low risk, incredibly low reward. Yeah, all right. Uh... So before everyone was going to die in a boring old tragic way, but now they're gonna die in an exciting blaze of glory. Perfect. It, With a huge celebrity. Great. It's true. Yeah. This story. Their, their, their will deaths be will be 
<laughs> Their deaths yeah. will be overshadowed by the huge celebrity that was involved. Butch has the no, only Butch has the only escape pod on the ship, and he's in it right now, <laughs> just buckled in. Hey, what are you doing? Over, what are you doing over there? <laughs> Nothing. No, this will be a, a beautiful, tragic tale for all future future residents of the planet. That uh, famous Butch Cairo was on the plane on the ship that crashed with a ton of residents as he tried to save them heroically. Yeah, yeah. Just a real, really cool trivia question, like twenty years from now. Yeah, that journalism died. The Ian Memoriam, <laughs> the Ian Memoriam segment at uh, the uh, the equivalent of the Pulitzers this year is going to be really, uh, <laughs> it's gonna be very really tear, dramatic, real tearjerker. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, all right. Okay. So you're going to make it try to hit the cloud head on. Yeah, I seal. Before I do that, I make another announcement and I say, "Residents of Walston, this is Titania again, your captain speaking. I'm going to seal all the doors." Uh, and secure the airlocks and provide as much life support for the ship as I can. We're going to hit some turbulence. Uh, we're going to try to hit the storm head on to escape the blast radius. Uh, what? You wouldn't, under you wouldn't understand it. It's a bit aerodynamics <laughs> and astrogation, but hopefully by hitting it directly on, we'll avoid the ship flying off and everybody dying. So, uh, all right, sealing the doors. And I seal all the doors. Okay. All right. Ooh. So you lift off in this ash cloud, but then the pyroclastic cloud is just barreling forward. And the, maybe the two of you working together are able to get the ship up. You make a, a large bank and you turn the point of the scout courier directly towards the cloud and you try to hit it head on. Okay. Um, so the base layer of the super of the cloud is a layer of superheated steam. Um, if you're above that, which I'm assuming you are, you had, you know, you had enough time. Uh, so the temperatures aren't high enough to damage the vessel. So good news. Uh, however, the shock wave is a different story and it slams into the ship and everyone. OK, so everyone who is not strapped down takes 3D damage. Uh, oh, however, it's only 1D if you headed directly into the cloud. So wow, nice. And if they're strapped in, uh, you you know you reduce it to you. It's one one D if you're strapped in, and one D if you headed directly into the cloud. So there are some other people who have to make very difficult dex checks to reduce the damage. But <laughs> we'll leave that for another time. Um, all right. So when you hit the shockwave, the high and dry is flung upwards and out away from the volcano and out toward open sea. Um, so you're just like, you're just, you're just, it hits you so hard, just flings the ship backwards. Alarms are blaring. Uh, if you do, you know, imagine you're trying to do a damage report. Uh, the computer spits out a damage report that the, the physical damage to the hull is minimal, but the power plant and drive systems have been overloaded and cut out. The interior lights all go off. Emergency power kicks in eventually. And after you know, a couple seconds, some dim light returns. But you know, you all know that you can't power the lifters or the main drive on emergency power. And now you are hurtling in a ballistic arc without power and you're tumbling and in a spin at the same time. At this rate, no one will survive the crash. So, uh, two things need to happen. You know, like I would say to you know this. One is that you need to reboot the control systems from the bridge or engineering. However, you can't do that until you have power. So the other thing that needs to happen is you need to manually override the safety cutouts on the power plant and get power to the engines. So someone is going to need to go down to engineering to do that in person. And then someone is going to need to do to uh, reboot the control systems to see if you can survive. You can flatten, get, get yourself out of this tumble, out of this spin and survive the impact. All right. Okay. Butch, how are you feeling about your your engineering capabilities? I feel somewhat confident, Captain, in my engineering capabilities, but I feel even more confident and capable to receive a command to go below decks, if that's what you wish. If you're able to do that, uh, I can stay up here, man, in the bridge and be able to flip the switch as soon as you get the power back on. Aye, aye, Captain. Turns so away from a chair. What, what's your engineering skill, Butch? This will be a jack of all trades two check for Butch Ooh. Cairo. If you want Ooh. to put it in his hands, 
And it, that, might, that might still make the best sense because the two most capable people on the bridge are still up there. Uh, you know, I mean, I can pilot a little bit, but I'm no Bridger or Titania up there, so. Well, my engineering's only one. My electronics is two, so I feel like I'm better up here. Yep. So yeah, so it's going to be an electronics or a difficult pilot pilot check to reboot the control systems. Um, the way this is, this is going to do is a small mini mechanic for this. So if you, the pilot can make the piloting check to uh, save the ship and reboot the systems in the same turn. Oh. Um, so if you want to, if you want to make that one, that's fine. Uh, and then for the the engineer check is going to be an average engineer power check. So uh, yeah, it's going to be you just have to hit an eight. Uh, can I, can Captain Bridger, can he do, can I do a, a leadership check on Butch to try to give him a boon on when, when he tries to do this? I don't see why not. However, that means I'm going to say that that's true. Then Titania is going to have to do the piloting check. I can take that okay. on if okay. need be. Okay. All right. So basically the way this works is there are three rounds. Going up, going down, and seconds to impact. And during each round, you get to make this engineering check and the piloting check, and you try to get and try to get yourselves out. Uh, and the number of checks you make, the number of successful checks you make, uh, affects what happens. Okay. So, so cool. the idea is that Butch is going to rush down to en- unstrap himself and rush down to engineering to try to to try to reboot everything in a Levi blaze of glory. <laughs> okay. So Butch Cairo rushes down to engineering. Uh, give me, oh uh, yeah. And then maybe you're, maybe you're talking to him over comms. Yeah. Captain Bridger. So what do you, what do you say to him as he's, as he's making his way through He's like, as he's like going down the corridors, like grabbing things to try to like, you're, you're, you're in a flat spin and tumbling. So like, you're just kind of just, like getting down there. The gravity systems are given, have, you know, you're trying to like, you're like pressed against the wall, then you're thrown against the other side of the wall, then you fall over. It's hard to get down to engineering. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Bridger is over the comms. He's like, Butch, remember the incident at Callisto? The diplomatic effort with the Hivers I was beside myself. I was so frightened and you could see it. You remember the advice you gave me? I do, Captain. I told you. Said, you. Oh yes, oh, sorry. please. No, to you. <laughs> yeah, yes. Perhaps you have different memories of what happened, but <laughs> as I recall, you just looked me in the eye and you said, "Quite simply, you've got this, Butch. You've got this." That's all Butch needed to roll. Uh, that is an eight on leadership. Okay, that is enough. So I think you, that's one boon. I think that's one boon. One boon. Yeah, it's the yes. Um, so, so that's one out of your two dice. You get to take take the best of, like, roll three dice and take the best two. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Oh wow, that's great. That's yeah, that's awesome. Number of boons. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're good. So let's talk this engineering check through after I receive this boon through uh, the hype machine known as Captain Bridger. (laughs) Um, I'm running with no engineering training, but jack of all trades, too. That starts me at a negative two? Negative one. Negative one. And engineering is governed by which characteristic? Education. Education. So that's a plus zero. So plus one or minus one still. And then I get to roll one of my die and take best two out of three? Yep. Yep. Okay. Rolled a five and a one to begin with. But then that second die turned into a six as I used the oh! boon. All right. So Butch, like, he's all banged up. You know, he's not very, he's pretty, he's not very dexterous, right? Like, that was how you got Negative that was, one, that yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Three and So he's just... <laughs> Falling all over the place, banging up his beautiful anchorman face. His hair is all messed up. It's never out. Of, it's never out of place, but it's out of place right now. And he gets down to engineering, and he's able to get. He's able to find the manual override. He yanks open the control panel, and throws up the control switch, 
and then power comes on, you know, the power starts flowing. Uh, all right, uh, who up on the bridge is going to make the electronics or piloting check? It is an average electronics check or difficult pilot check to reboot the system. Oh, wait, we can do either or? Uh, you have to do both. Oh, so, you have to do both, oh, okay. One of you, like, you can, no, you can do either electronics or piloting to reboot. Oh, okay. Um, I think Titania will do her electronics because I have two in that and it's not as hard as the piloting. So Okay. <laughs> just, gonna do, just gonna do the easier one, I think. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Nice. Oh. Oh, what? We never did your damage. <gasps> oh, well, hands, so, off, hands off the chest piece. Oh. <laughs> you each take two points of damage. This was but when you hit the shockwave. Oh, wow. Oh. Okay. Wait, even though we were strapped in? Yeah, it's just one D. Sorry, I was like, oh, you saved yourself from damage. And I was like, oh, no, it's one D. Right. Um, okay. In, so in, in phase one of going up, this is when you're nearing the apex of your crazy tumble and spinning wildly. Um, oh, I forgot this. Uh, it's a good thing you rolled that 11, Bush, because all checks are made at DM minus two if you're not secured. Oh, Jesus. Oh, whoa. So you got oh, wow. You still got it. <laughs> Okay. God. Everybody, everybody who's not strapped in gets flung about. Okay. So this, so you have to roll an a, de, a dexter, athletics dexterity check to avoid damage. Oh, right. God. Boy. Right now. Yeah. Okay. I know you guys are strapped. You and you guys are strapped in. It's just Butch who uh, okay. needs to do this. Oh, okay. <laughs> Setting the least dexterous person. I feel like I'm landing the plane at the end of airplane. Um, <laughs> an eight. Okay, you're fine. Okay. So you just take. Uh, you know, let me just make sure. And then my total hit hit points now are I forget how we calculated that endurance. Just, you go down. You take your endurance down. Oh. When you get to zero endurance, you're unconscious. I hope we land this plane, get it out of this pyroclastic cloud pretty quick. <laughs> okay, but you take four points of damage. I am unconscious. Oh, oh no. I had a six endurance. You took oh. two on the decks, and then as soon as he hears the boon, the words of encouragement from Captain Bridger, and is successful in his check, just like a spanner, the wrench that that guy was carrying floats <laughs> through the air, hits him right in the head, and knocks him unconscious. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, Butch? You- Butch? Go ahead and go ahead and make. What were you were uh, Sydney? Were you going to try to reboot the system? And Skid, were you going to try to pi- flatten the uh, try to flatten the spin? Uh, I am. All right, okay. Sydney, go ahead and make your check, and then Skid make your check after that. Okay. Uh, okay. So that's four. Uh, electronics is an in intellect. Yeah. No education. Uh, oh. Uh. Eleven. Okay. Nice. You're able to the power Butch with it before before he goes unconscious is able to restore power of the engines. You see that your panel before you lights up. You're able to reroute power, get control, and and Captain Bridger. You're able to make your piloting check to try to to lessen the tumble. Ooh, boy. Oh boy, boy. I wish I had a boon. Can I can I give myself a little pep talk? Get a leadership check. Get a boon. You cannot. Uh, eleven. Okay. All right. Great. That is one success. Um, okay, now we get into you reach the apex of your of your of the uh, of the the blast. Like you get blasted away, and now you start to fall and stabilize somewhat thanks to the piloting check. And the vessel will stop tumbling on its long axis due to its shape, but now it's it's still in a flat spin. So unless you're secured, all checks are at a DM minus one. Uh, it will be 1d damage for anyone not strapped in. But you also know that Butch is unconscious. Right. Or you know he's not responding. Right. What do you do? Does someone need to be down there? Like, does one of us have to go down there now? I mean, no, and you don't need to, you, the power's back on, so you don't need to worry about that check this time. So you've already, you, you, were, you were very successful, you got that in the first round. Uh, whoever's piloting will continue to need to make pilot checks to save the ship each round. Uh, but for the rest of the round, you can do whatever you want to do. I have to go get Butch. Because <laughs> if, he's, if he's unconscious, he's going to continue to take damage. Yeah. Fuck. Shit. Okay. 
Um, I turn to Captain Aaron Bridgers and I say, All right, Captain Aaron, uh, I'll leave you to it. I have to... I have to go get Butch. All right, Captain Titania. Please, uh, right. please save his life. He's an f- old friend of mine. And yours, I take it. <laughs> we both wink. We both wink. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> the ship is in a flat spin. <laughs> when you have to take it off like, <laughs> I make an announcement. If the ship goes down, I want everyone to know. Butch Cairo's my ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> this is Captain Titania Wesland signing off. Do you know how bad Butch's luck is to be unconscious during this? This would make it, oh. It's very, very bad. Oh. In fact, uh, you take another one point of damage. Oh, oh so I'm right, um, negative I un- one. So, so no, now no. this no, you, this now goes to your strength or your dex. When you're... Oh, so when I go to zero there, then my strength starts draining. Okay, got it. Yeah, and when all three are zero, you're dead. Okay. All right, I I get I vac suit up, um, and I start making my way to the lower area, and I plan to do a gravity esque thing of you know like tethering to him, and then <laughs> holding him as we like spin out of control, hopefully back <laughs> towards the front of the ship. Um. Great. Okay. Uh, so yeah, you, let's, let you, t- let's, you take a one point of damage too, now that you're unstrapped, so you, I, I, making your way down the, uh, the corridor, you get slammed about, you take one point of damage, um, oh, you know what, I did this wrong, damage. Is it a dexterity check? It's, when your endurance is zero, your damage yeah. goes to strength or dex, and with I was gonna say, it was such a zero. dramatic moment that I wasn't gonna say anything, but What's, yeah, that's only, like, if you're, de- like, with stun stunners, like, when your endurance goes down yeah. unconscious, yeah. All right, I fully admit I did it wrong, but the story is good enough that I want to leave it that Butch is unconscious. Okay. <laughs> is that okay with you, Grant? That's absolutely fine, and I, I love any Alfonso Cuaron uh, potential references, so this is perfect. I love it. All right. Okay, so Titania, you get down to engineering, you see Butch slumped, despite the rules of the game, on the, on the, on the deck. Uh, and I see the wrench, and his head is bleeding. I'm like... <laughs> Judy, stupid, stupid boy. And I strap him to me and I tether us together with carabiners and whatnot. And I try to just like race him against me and do like the lifeguard swim, but standing it on a spaceship so that he doesn't like counterbalance my weight too much. Uh, and I want to so try to get back to all, There's an open crash, you know, there's, an o- there's one open crash seat, we'll say, in engineering. Oh, oh yeah, I absolutely strap him right in. All right. So give me, give me an engineering check for the straps and the carabiners. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what? Wow. I think the carabiners did most of that engineering check, just FYI. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay. Now give me a strength check to, to drag his dead weight to the, uh, to the chair. <laughs> That's just strength. Just that is my modifier. No skill. Yeah. Okay. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay. Oh, nice. It takes you a minute, but you're able to you're able to get him there, and you strap him into the chair. What do you do? You, so you just kind of like hold on. You, you're carabiner. You, you carabine yourself to him. Yeah. So should I try to make my way back to the front of the ship? Not during this round, because Skid has to roll his piloting check. Uh, yes. Okay. I'm strapped in. <sighs> okay. So now I'm just trying to straighten the ship out, stop it from spinning as it's going yes. down. Right. Oh, oh, 13. Okay, yeah, so now, you know, the, and the ship is now actually really beginning to respond to the helm. You're able to stabilize uh, the spin. However, you're still hurtling towards the ocean. Um, so, we're now in round three, seconds to impact. Oh, oh man. So with seconds to impact, Titania, what do you want to do? Uh, okay, I strap both of us to the chair. I, I sit on him and I strap myself to the chair too. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and I right, carry myself. First things first. In. It's like out of sight in the car trunk. This is awesome. <laughs> okay, first things first. You're gonna take one d worth of damage. Okay. Oh, you only take two points of damage. Ooh, okay. okay, I haven't even gone down yet uh, in my points. Awesome. Uh, people, by the way, you hear through this. People are screaming. Everyone's like being like. There's some people who have been thrown about. Um, okay, uh, Skid, 
make your piloting check to see if you're able to get out of the dive, this nose dive towards the sea. Come on, Bridger, old buddy, old pal, don't fill me now. Uh, eleven. Oh man, I should say by the way, I forgot to mention this last week as well. After the first episode, we got a we got I got an email from Vicky Moore. She was very very grateful for the for that we that we mentioned her and very happy to see us playing. But then she had some thoughts. I have, apparently <laughs> I uh, I uh, shortchanged you all skills, so we went back mm-hmm. in and corrected that. I just I assured you all background skills and there were extra skills and advancements and a bunch of other things. I'm sorry. I apologize to my friends and family, but most of all to Vicky, because she helped me so much and I just ignored all the information she gave me. <laughs> she, um, <yeah. laughs> Thanks, Vicky. But Miss thank you, it. Vicky. You all got you all got better skills. Um, <laughs> okay. So steely eyed Captain Bridger is able he's like he's like yanking the yoke back with all his might, trying to pull this ship out of the dive. Um let's see, let's give so we're now Okay, you made three successful pilot checks. Yeah. Um, you pull out of the spin and get the high and dry's nose up, accelerate out of the dive and over the sea, and you were able to climb to a safe altitude. You take a fair amount of minor damage to internal components, and on board, people have been violently sick, but otherwise, <laughs> they're mostly okay. <laughs> so it's going to require a bunch of cleanup, but you have gotten, you, have, you escaped the eruption. Awesome. Damn. We just cleaned the whole ship. Yeah, really. Well did. let the Wallstonian guys do it. Ah, uh, we should hire dude. we should hire them. No, yeah, they clearly get, need cash. Do yeah. we get to keep the ship if we clean it? No, wh- how do you think things work where you come from? <laughs> how do you think that equates to that? We just want to get off world. We have dreams. <laughs> yeah, you can come with us. You clean our ship. You'll be our little crew and uh yeah, we'll keep you around or whatever. I don't know. W- we want to be in a band. <laughs> yeah, all right. You can you can start a band. I don't I don't care. Well, you killed our lead singer. <laughs> oh. I'd like to vote that one of them somehow, in some way, it seems impossible, but one of the surviving uh, Wesleyan graduates is wearing a shirt that says Evangelion on it <laughs> <laughs> to tie it into our old fiasco game. There you go. The, the, the Capita Casa, the, the, the multiverse, uh, Capita Casa multiverse. Mm-hmm. Ska, yeah. st- apparently Christian Ska still exists even <laughs> thousands of years in the future. <laughs> um, okay. So the ship is, is damaged, but you're able to limp your way back to the starport. And when you land, a crowd is waiting for you. You've been, you're being hailed as heroes. You saved... Awesome dozens of lives and in a very small population that's a lot of people yeah it's like Um, half the world's population (laughs) it's like half the world's population not that much (laughs) um but the eruption is now winding down the lava flow looks like it will head out to sea and not damage any other settlements you know ash and dust are billowing across the island but the prevailing winds are taking them taking all that mainly out to sea and the mountain however does look like it's going to remain active but for the moment there are celebrations and you're invited to a number of parties. Uh, I will say, you know, the ultimate, ultimately the population of Walston just isn't all that much fun. You know, everyone's kind of complacent uh, and they really only care about maintaining the status quo, but they will, they do, they had the, their first real brush with certain death and they are very, they, they, they're willing to get drunk with you all. What happens at this party? Wow. Uh... I think uh, I think Bridger. I think he really wants to spend time with Varger, like any Varger that are there. And I think he wants to make a point to spend most of his time with them, and you know, clearly like treating them as equals. Just just to uh, just to set an example. That's uh, that's what he's going to do. But he's going to. He's going to have uh, four or five uh, glasses of Walstonian wine. <laughs> it's and terrible. It's, ter- it's truly terrible. Yeah, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's really bad. <laughs> it's <a> try our <laughs> Soviet wine. It's really... Um, and uh, I think he's going to wonder aloud if the planet was named after a character actor, uh, Ray Walston. You know, it's very likely it could have been. Probably. 
Um, all right, Butch Cairo, what are you doing at this party? By the way, your your uh, your pointed social uh, social maneuverings caused quite the stir, Captain Bridger. Oh, good. Well, good, <laughs> just as I intended. Uh, Butch Cairo is nursing a highball with some, uh, you know, kind of um, neon-looking liqueur in it from an alien planet. <laughs> And he's got his head wrapped up in bandages and his arm in a sling. And he's just kind of leaned up against a bar saying, You know, I saved all your lives today. You should be thankful and feel lucky when you go to bed tonight. Wink! (laughs) And then he looks longingly across the bar at Titania, knowing that he could never be this cool when talking to her while conscious and kind of... (laughs) goes back into his weird little artificial world where he lives not as Jude Wolverson, the young man that she knew him as, but as these two alter egos, Levi Blaze and Butch Cairo, where he can never truly be happy with himself and takes another deep sip. Should we flash back perhaps to the moment when uh, after you, after Captain Bridger pulled you out of the dive that uh, Titania performed first aid on you and got you back up? (laughs) Yeah, I performed CPR on Jude. (laughs) And it was mostly me. It was mostly Titania slapping him and going, Jude, get up. If you die, I'll kill you. (laughs) (laughs) That is CPR. And that's CPR of the scout service. That's right. (laughs) And when you when your eyes flutter open, Butch, and you see you see <laughs> that you feel the, the 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 intense slap across your face, what do you say? I'm sorry. I should have just come out and said hello instead of trying to be someone I wasn't. But thank you, thank you for this. And then he kind of pulls himself up on his elbows. And begins to walk away and down says, the hallway to the bridge. She says, Jude, I, I don't care. It's been like 20 years. Seriously, get over it. And I slap him on the back, kind of give him a half hug. And I go, I'll see you. Let's go out for a drink or something. We'll catch up. It's fine. <laughs> okay. <The> one, <laughs> Gus, the bassist from the Wallstonian band, who tried to attack you with the wrench. Uh, he's like, you guys together or something? No, it's not like that anymore. It's not like that. It was 27 for me, by the way, Titania. You had that little, little gap year in the black hole. Let's, okay, we talk about it over drinks, though. Wait, Butch Cairo, you're seeing somebody? Butch Cairo <laughs> is single and ready to mingle. And Titania, Titania hears that as he like goes into his other character and she just kind of goes, some things never change. And she walks away down the hallway. <laughs> All right. We go back to the party. Butch has, is staring longingly across the way at Titania, but can't, make, can't gather his confidence to go talk to her. Titania, what are you doing at this party? You, you've got your ship. Like, you know, you, you'll, you're, the dictator has promised to cover all the re- repairs that were sustained during the eruption. You know, obviously, they don't have the resources to do a full refit. You're going to have to do that back in Flammarion. But, you know... You got. You're gonna take your ship back to the high port on Flamarian, do the full retrofit, and then you'll have, the galaxy will be yours. What are you gonna do now? Yeah, Titania has like one foot up on a, the bench next to one of the tables. She's like talking to the the bassist, and she's like, "Yeah, well, I've never been in a band. I, I guess I, I we could start one. I, I, there's so many things I, I want to do. I, I feel like I, you know I have a ship, right? That's my ship. That's that's mine." Uh, And then she goes, oh, wait, I want to talk some... Sorry, hold on. Um, And she goes to find uh, Jenny, Jennifer, the Varger. (laughs) Uh Uh, uh, Whoa. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa. Wait, did you you talk like that? How did she talk? I don't remember. (laughs) I think, was it like that? It might have been like that. I think it was Um, probably like that. Varger have husky voices because... (laughs) That's how I'm doing them. Yeah. Volcano changed us all. Uh, I forget everything that happened before it. Um, yes, I've inhaled quite a bit of ash. It's not good for the lungs. <laughs> Me too. Um, and she actually just wants to talk to uh, Jennifer and some of the other Varger and stuff because she studies xenology. And this is a planet that she hadn't been to. And she's kind of just taking down notes. And she 
is having a fun time at the party, but goes right back into her scout mentality, um, knowing that there's so much more to be explored now that she has this ship. And uh, she's like, I, I got to keep a log. And she takes out some of her books um, and writes down Walston and, and lists some of the people that she's met and the things that are here. And she transfers over the schematics that they got of the planet. And uh, she kind of turns into a nerd like she was in college. Uh, mm. But making friends, hopefully. Jenny, do you like me? Are we friends? No. All right. <laughs> all we, could, we can work on that. You're all right. Oh, all right. All right. I'll buy you a drink. That's my ship. All right. <laughs> <Have a> ship. <laughs> all right, fine. Uh, uh, oh, and... um. Oh, God. I think she asks... This could be later, but I think she does ask Jude and Captain Aaron Bridgers if they would like to join her uh, for future endeavors. They can be a sort of motley crew. Um, and she says, I I have the ship, but I, I don't know what to call it. I've already named a planet uh, in my line of work, and I, I feel as though... I don't need to name something else. I don't have to own everything in the world. The world's there to be explored, and the galaxy is there for for people to to see what's out there and take part in it and not take ownership of it. But do you have any name suggestions for the ship? I feel like it's kind of our ship. We found it together. Um. Wow. Yeah, I think a high and dry seems it's not very evocative is it i think it's something i think it's earned uh, a new name um what's the wolf's name again <gasps> kimberly kimberly name it, name it after the after our mascot that's not oh, such a bad idea that's a great idea she where is she and i call kimberly over uh i said kimberly okay i oh dude dude you have to do this you're you're a knight right can you knight Kimbley and then we'll name the ship <laughs> we'll name the ship Sir Kimbley. Oh. <laughs> Jude pulls Kimbley. out a retractable great sword from his pocket and it like futuristically <laughs> telescopes. Oh. Bow before me. Okay, Kimbley, lay down. 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 Good, good girl. <laughs> Taps him on one shoulder, then on the other. I dub thee Sir Kimbley, first dog of the SS Kimbley. Mm. Kimbley, feeling weird about the sword, jumps up, tackles Butch, and rips his throat out. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> good dog, <Yeah>. good dog. <laughs> <laughs> Kimbley is very confused, but uh, if you give her a little spot of meat, perhaps, she'll uh, she'll accept it. And then... Uh, yeah, so you have look at this motley crew. You've taken the wolf, taken the wolf with you. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so the parties die down over the next few days. You're able to get the the Sir Kimbley's uh, jump drive operational. Uh, the population is still very grateful to you. They don't really have anything to give you. They're not a very wealthy. Even you know, even the the upper classes, the upper classes here are still pretty living pretty simply. Uh, but you do get showered with home baked goods and hand knitted sweaters. Which will Great. come in handy on those long, cold spacer nights. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and eventually you lift off and depart on your way to Flamarian. A crowd of well-wishers comes to see you, see you off. And then the ship slowly ascends. And you can see the vast plume of ash trailing from the volcano toward the mainland. And eventually you come to orbit. And it's time to make the jump. Do you give the order? All right, Captain. Put it in jump drive. That's uh, Captain. Just for Ooh. protocol's sake, perhaps uh. you should, while we're on board, you can call me Mr. Bridger. Oh, sure, Mr. Aaron. Put her in jump. <laughs> aye, aye, <laughs> Captain. <laughs> and <laughs> I throw throw the jump drive. So take All us right. into subspace. Sir Bridger pulls the lever pulls the other level lever and hits the button and the stars stretch ahead of you and you jump back toward Flamarian. And that is the end of our adventure. Yay! Oh, wow. awesome. Thank you, Matthew! Thank Great you, Matthew. Work, that was awesome. Oh, that was so much fun. 
Thanks everybody for watching. Uh, if you are interested, by the way, uh, the Glass Cannon Network is participating in the Extra Life Game Day again this year. Uh, it's on November 6th. You can go to uh, any of our, you know, any of our social media pages and find a link to our pages there. You can join our, if you, you can support us or you can join our team and raise your own funds. Uh, we, we did this last, we did, we've done this the past two years. Last year, we raised over about $30,000, right? You know, all of the, the nation stepped up uh, and we're trying to beat that this year. So yeah, so to benefit the children, the Children's Miracle Network Hospital System. Uh, Grant, you want to jump in there? Yeah, if you can't make a donation yourself to one of our pages, extralife.org slash participant Grant Berger, if you want to make one to mine, you can go to our team pages from any of our individual pages and start up your own a uh, fundraising team that way you can engage people in your life that are not necessarily members of the niche let them know you're raising money for children's miracle network hospitals and we can uh, double triple quadruple our impact uh thirty thousand dollars about what we raised last year was enough to buy uh for example a respirator uh, a ventilator which in times like these is very important so if we can get that or, or blast past it this year it'll be huge but you don't have to donate anything yourself you can help us raise money by starting your own team and joining our page sharing it on your socials raising money with your mom your dad your co-workers etc yes uh, and we appreciate it. And if, you can always watch our streams. We'll be, doing, we'll be, we'll, we'll be publishing our schedule soon. Uh, should be a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, and it's for a great cause. So anyway, yeah. thank you all for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed Traveler. Uh, and we'll see you all soon. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.